Hello everyone and welcome to the video tutorial for how to create environment maps or more specifically cube maps using Virto Studio. So the first step you want to do when you want to create one of these is you want to add a sphere to your scene. The resolution of the sphere doesn't really matter. The more important thing about it is the sphere needs to be centered at the origin which it is not by default. The quickest way to do that is to go to Transformations and reset the transform to the identity. That will basically place the sphere directly in the center of the scene. Then you want to go to the Scale tool and you essentially want to uniformly scale the sphere as high as you possibly, not as high as you possibly can, but high enough such that you're inside of the sphere. After that you want to make sure the sphere is selected and you would basically want to disable all lighting for the sphere. And there are more than one way to do that and the least complicated way is to go to the emit properties for the sphere and set everything to one. This basically makes it so that the only thing that is displayed on the sphere is the texture map which currently isn't set so we get white. Then what you basically need is some form of a sphere map. Now a sphere map is essentially a UV um, par parameterization of a uh, 3D environment map. Now that I just basically made that way more confusing than it really is, it could be any panoramic picture. Uh, this is one that I took with my iPhone that I want to use. Um, this is not a perfect uh, UV map simply because the left edge and the right edge don't match up. In other words, it is not a complete sphere, it's maybe more like half of one because the iPhone stops when you when you get a certain uh, panoramic size, which is in this case maybe like 180 degrees instead of 360. So I'm going to drag this image, it's pretty large, so it might take a while to load, onto my sphere. And after a few seconds here it'll pop up and we can basically see that when you're in the exact center of the scene looking out, it almost looks like we are actually in 3D in the world of the panoramic picture. Now if you had a proper panoramic image that properly met in 360 degrees, uh, around the whole sphere, you wouldn't have this ugly seam right here. But you would still have pinching at the poles and that just has to do with the way sphere mapping um, is. And that's one of the reasons why people tend to want to use um, real cube maps that are taken with fancy cameras um, where you know it won't have that problem. But if you're like me and you don't have access to one of those very expensive cameras to take your own cube maps, um, this is a, a really nice alternative. So how do we get rid of this ugly seam? Well, if, if we're dealing with it, how do we get rid of it? Well, I can just go to the material properties, essentially, of this sphere, go into the texture panel, and you notice there's a wrap mode here. If I switch this over to mirror and tile the image twice in the x direction, you'll see that basically now we basically have like 360 degrees of coverage where it mirrors the image at this, where it would normally be the seam so that when we look over on this side we get you know, the 180 degrees this way, and then we get a mirrored repeat of the 180 degrees this way. So if we get close enough and maybe narrow our field of view a little bit, we actually have a really nice environment map. So how do we export this in a way that a graphics engine such as Unity or, or any other uh, engine that supports cube maps could use it? Well, the final step here is to go to the Add button add what's called a cube map renderer in the exact center of the scene which is represented here by an eye. Place that eye as close to the center of the uh, scene as we possibly can. Which is right there. And then we go to the properties of that cube map renderer which is via the material button and we can pick the resolution of the outgoing cube map. Now we don't need to do overkill such that we actually don't um, that we actually capture more than the original resolution of the original cube map, but you don't want to go too low. It depends on essentially the application of what you're doing. I'm going to pick 1024 here. And I'm essentially going to, at that point, update the cube map and export it to a zip file. My cube map, because it's mine. At that point, we basically should have everything we need to have our cube map be rendered and exported so that it can be used in the, any other engine. So here it is. There you have it. That's essentially how to export a cube map from Virto Studio. If you want to stick around for the appendix of this video, I'll show you how to basically uh, import it right back in and how it might look if you were using it as a reflection map. So here's a sphere again. This time we're going to use the sphere as a reflecting um, or a reflection surface for a reflection shader that shows our um, sphere map, cube map. Jeez, I get confused myself. 
So last, uh, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Reflective Environment Mapping in the Shader panel of the Materials property. And when it comes time to pick the cube map, I'm going to give it the faces. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to load these faces into the uh, texture library first. And I'm going to load them in the order that I expect to load them into here, which is X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus, Z plus, Z minus. So we get pos X, meg X, pos Y, meg Y, pos Z, meg Z. Now we should have all six of these in here. Now I supply them as input to the cube map, again just by clicking to the sphere, going to the shader panel, specifying the cube map input. So if I do it in the right order, it should be positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, and negative z. And as you can see, the sphere map works just fine, and we basically have created an environment map from a panorama picture that was taken with an iPhone. And you can basically use this sphere map as input to any system that would support um, reflective cube mapping or really any kind of cube mapping of any kind. So that's how you do it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, more videos will come.